Hi everyone. So for a while now, I've been wanting to make a bulletproof mask. Um, and there are a few different ways I had debated about going about this. One of the reasons why it's taken me so long to actually start on it. And I finally last week came up with what I felt would be a good way. So this is the video footage of that project. Hopefully you enjoy. I started with a Guy Fox mask. This was a cheap one on Amazon. It was discolored, less than a dollar. It actually came cracked and chipped. So I took off the elastic and the little foam that they had stuck in there and taped off the mouth and the eyes and taped up the sides like this to make a mold. You And I filled that mold with plaster, sealed it up with acrylic, and then waxed it as a mold release to make a composite. This is what the mold looked like. Well, the first one that I made before I broke it. I dropped it. That's the main problem with plaster is that it's very brittle and it's very easy to break. Nice thing about it is it's cheap, you know, and easy to acquire. You don't have to order online. Most craft stores carry it, but I mean, I literally dropped this less than a foot when I was setting up out in the garage and it just broke right in half and then a bunch of stuff off the side. And the second one actually um, that I ended up using, because this one broke, also cracked a bit so it probably won't be usable. That was more my fault in the lamination process. So, But anyway, so I took this mold and the mask and I formed fiberglass in between it to get this. I used high, um, high impact resin, the uh, para aramid epoxy max bond resin I used in my energy absorbing hat build if you'd seen that and I used simple fiberglass plain weave because I wanted it to conform to the shape better and ballistic grade fabric rarely will there it's very tightly woven so you can't m manipulate it around shapes so having just three layers of fiberglass as my template I'm going to build inwards about 10 layers of spectra fabric, that's the plan, maybe 12. Um, and then I'm going to add a viscoelastic polymer, you know, the energy absorbing polymer that I use in my hat build, as a backing to keep it nice and comfortable. And of course, drill out the elastic so that way it can contour to the head really well. But yeah, that's the basic idea. I would have recorded this part, but like I said, I didn't know how it was going to turn out or if it was going to work. And now that I have it, you know, I've learned a lot about making this kind of fast, or face mold. First off, it was a little misshapen. This side sunk in more than this when I molded it. It shifted in the bowl. Um, it's a little, which also stretched out the side of the mask a bit, so it was a little uneven. But the nice thing is I added extra fabric. You know, I made them a little bit wider, which you should do when you're, because you can always trim back, you know. And that's what I ended up doing. So. I'm going to now take this outside, take a Dremel to it, bust out all the last plaster that's stuck to the inside of the mold, clean up all this excess resin. I'll show you over here. That's a nice, how dark it is right there. Just pretty much clean it up, and then we will prep it to add Spectra fabric. I'll go over Spectra, because I chose that over Kevlar and nylon, which I have in ballistic grades. And we'll take it out and test it. Shoot it up. So... I'm excited. Let's get started. So now I'm out in the garage, ready to start taking the Dremel to this. First thing I'm going to do is bust out all the uh, uh, plaster mold that got stuck inside. Also take off the little bit of acrylic that was on the surface of the mold, obviously. All the white stuff, pretty much. Then I'm going to take a grind wheel, cut out. I kind of have a trace of the size based on this plus a little bit extra you can see underneath just a little extra added coverage and then I'm gonna try to shape it a little bit inside knock off the extra resin and then we'll be ready to start laminating the spectra so I'm gonna knock this out and then I'll show the cutting and grinding part alright so now I'm out in the garage I went ahead and trimmed all the excess down. Still need to mold or shape a little bit down here. It's a little 
bit too much wider on the one side compared to the other. You can probably see like that. But for the most part, this is turning out really well. It's a little bit bigger but than my face, but that'll work in favor of being able to build inwards to fill it with a ballistic fabric. I went ahead and traced around the eyes, the mouth, and where the elastic will go that I will be cutting out next. As you can see, I made short work of all the plaster that was in there with my Dremel. There's still a little bit left stuck to the side that I can just take a sander and knock out now. I did have a blowout towards the nose, which is to be expected. This is only three layers of fiberglass, and that was probably the spot that had the least amount of the resin, so I should have been a little bit more careful. But that'll be very, as you can see there, that'll be actually very easy to patch as I'm laying in the spectra fabric and laminating it. When it's done, I can flip it over, fill that little void spot. It won't be too big of a deal. So anyways, let's get to it. I'm going to, oh yeah, I, I did obviously get a few air bubbles, a few air pockets. I'll see if I can. That were in various spots that I'm going to have to sand and buff down. You know, because it was sandwiched between the mask and the mold. Like so, right? Like that. And air wasn't able to release. I should have worked it slower, kind of moved it around maybe. Not to stretch or screw up the fabric, but just been real gentle and try to kind of work the air out of it. But either way, this will work. And I'm really excited because it's coming together. And we will have a bulletproof mask here soon. So anyways, next step, start cutting up and sanding down. All right, so I start by drilling holes through the eyes and mouth and also where the elastic goes with just a drill bit. And then I switch off to a cutting wheel and a grinding wheel to try to just flush out this, the insides of the uh, eyes and mouth. The elastic spots were pretty easy with the cutting wheel. I could just cut side to side and then use a Stanley blade too, or an X-Acto knife to finish off the little burrs around it. Also with the eyes too, with this fiberglass and resin, it's fairly easy to cut through with just a Stanley blade, with it being this thin. So if, you're, if you don't have power tools, that would be the direction I would be going. That and sandpaper to really flush it out and make it look nice and even. So. Alright, so here's where we are now. I buffed out all the excess resin on the outside here. I'm going to be painting it and, you know, adding the mustache back in and eyebrows later anyways. And the inside, got it all buffed up really nice. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to tape off the mouth, the eyes, and this little hole in the nose. To, so that way um, the resin doesn't just pass through. And I'm actually going to apply more resin on the base as I add the first piece of fabric to help it get it contoured. And as I build up, I'm going to use less and less resin because especially with this stuff, Spectra, it doesn't laminate well. And, um, you know, generally when it comes to ballistic composites, they use very like hypercritical ratio of fabric to resin because too much resin can actually make a composite brittle. So I'm going to make up six ounces and I have ten pieces cut of spectra fabric. It looks a lot like fiberglass. Actually I'll show you just this top one because I also cut relief slits. That way I can, because the, the fabric being ballistic is so tightly woven it doesn't want to conform to the uh, shapes that I need. So by cutting these reliefs I can fold the fabric over and cut it a bit so that way it'll um, it'll be able to fit in there without any wrinkles. The later levels will not need it um, but I'm probably going to do the first three I'm going to do the one major relief cut like that and then trim off the corner. So anyways I'm gonna tape it up and get these things cut and then at the end I'll uh, start recording so you guys can see it laminating. All right. Alright, so now on to laminating. 
When it comes to Spectra fabric, it really doesn't um, hold to the lamination or the, the resin really well. Something that um, I had read online and it really is true. I mean, it, especially this ballistic grade tight woven fabric, the resin doesn't want to pass through it. I imagine if you used a thinner resin, it, you might have better luck getting it to laminate correctly without as much air bubbles, as well as using possibly a vacuum bag. If you had vacuum forming equipment, you could you go that route and you would have far less um, air bubbles and difficulty getting it to compress. What I ended up doing is just, I applied it quite a bit on the face of the mold and then I just continued to shape and push it into the contours and that worked really well but it's there were still ear pockets throughout so um, if I ever do it again I will probably be using vacuum bagging um, equipment which I have set up in my resin box and that's the other thing is that this resin is very thick but uh, and it's been getting very cold where I live but having that resin box has really helped out I was able to pretty much get it into a nice solid state in a matter of five, six hours with very little difficulty thanks to my resin box. So I have a build video of that if you're interested in that. It's a very simple build but uh, was very effective and helped out immensely when it came to this project. One of the reasons why the resin was so, so thick was because it was so cold out. So getting the correct temperature when you're curing resins is very critical as I mentioned before with my hat build. So as you can see I'm just applying ply after ply. Initially I, I did six layers with six ounces of resin. I didn't use all six ounces and then I did a second lamination of four layers with about five ounces of resin and then the next day I did a five layers with four ounces of resin and in each instance I didn't use all the resin and um, so the total was 15 layers of spectra fabric. The reason why I broke it up was um, I didn't want it to, I wanted to make sure it would conform to all the shapes and and not have as much problems with air pockets as I was laminating it I noticed how hard it was to get it to conform to the inside of the shape so I broke it up and it's a good idea to do that. So. All right, so it's been a few days. I added another five layers of Spectra cloth, and this is how it's looking now. That's how thick it is. A few blemishes, some air bubbles trapped in there. I mean, this was a very complicated shape for that fabric to fill in, and it was a very thick resin, and I wasn't vacuum bagging it. So if I had used vacuum bagging, I could have probably reduced the amount of air bubbles down to nothing hopefully but you know if you want to go that route you could always do that maybe with a slightly thinner resin you might have a little bit uh, more luck with that anyway so what I'm doing now is I'm just fixing like this bow here I'm gonna fill in a little bit of void spaces and I'm gonna try to bring as much detail on the front of the mask out and so what I'm doing is I got here a diamond tip real fine point for my Dremel used for, usually for etching glass and metal and that sort of stuff and I'm just working around trying to bring out the mustache clean up underneath the nose around the cheeks and the goatee and I also traced out these little like the you know, little goatee eyebrows and mustache because I'm going to after I'm done etching it I'm going to paint it white and I'm going to cut out some carbon fiber for the mustache and everything. I figured that would look really really neat for all those you know the hair points so anyways uh, let's get started on that I guess I'm gonna show you how I etch and clean it up with some sandpaper and get to spraying so now this worked really well at bringing out the definition in the mask that was lost from repeatedly um, uh, laminating. Even though most of the resin was on the inside, some of it did get out. And I lost it anyways when I had pressed it between the two molds, the mask and the, 
the plaster mold, not all of the definitions came through. So cutting those little pieces of paper and lightly taping them on and then just using the Dremel around it really helped bring that back out. And then when I built off of it with paint, I thought it, it turned out really nice. It was a little uneven, but this definitely was probably the better way to go to bring this definition out. Just go slow and be patient with it and it should look really nice. Alright, so this is where I'm going to stop the video. Pretty much, um, I didn't want it to go over a half an hour long, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop it here. But this is what the finished product looks like so, thus far. I got viscoelastic foam backing with some viscoelastic gel for the forehead because it sits kind of high the way it presses against the top. I went ahead and painted it. You can see how it looks now that I've etched around the features. A little lopsided on this eyebrow. But for the most part, I mean, for a prototype, I can't be happier with it. So the next video show you how these straps go on. In the next video I will be taking it out and testing it to see its ballistic capabilities. Yeah, so it sits something like that. Like that. So, as you can see, it, it, it worked pretty well. I mean, I can see pretty well. It sits on the face. doesn't really jiggle. It is, you know, fairly hefty being 15 layers of ballistic fabric, you know, will do that. And that's some high grade resin, very tough stuff. But anyway, so the next video I will be doing the ballistic test. I will be bringing out the clay to line the back so that way we can get back, back face deformation readings. And uh, hopefully it will stop plenty of calipers. I will be testing with a 22, 380, 38 special 9mm. Uh, I might be going out and testing it against a 44 Magnum, a 45, and a 357 Magnum in the days following, so I'm hoping that that will um, happen. So anyways, uh, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, of course. And this is the kind of stuff I'm gearing up to be building each week, so maybe uh, comment and suggest some ideas. Ballistic shield, stab proof clothing, those are the next few projects, and a rocket sled. So I'm excited. Let's get to it.